Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see what is setting time test and how the setting time test is conducted for the initial setting time and the final setting time. So we will try to understand this. So coming to the setting time, the setting time test is conducted to know the nature of a setting of a cement, whether it's a quick setting cement or not, right? So why do we conduct a setting time test? We need to understand whether the cement that we are going to use, whether it's a quick setting or not. That's the first reason. The second is that the setting time also helps in checking the deterioration or degradation in the quality of a cement due to transportation and storage. So let us say I have brought a cement today and I would check the setting time of that. And after two months, I have never used that cement and I have stored that cement. So after two months, I need to use that cement. So in that case, I need to check whether the cement, what I have stored for two months, whether it is fit to be used or not, right? In that case, what is the test that I can conduct on that? So that test what we are going to conduct on that will help us to know whether the cement is fit to be used or not. So that is why it is written here. It also helps in checking the deterioration or degradation in the quality of a cement due to transportation or and also due to the storage. And let's say when we have tested the cement when purchased and after two months, we need to use it again. But to check the quality, we can do the setting time test like as I mentioned now. So in this way, the setting time test will help us to know the quality of a cement. So with this understanding, we'll try to go ahead. So if you remember in one of my lecture, I told that we need to add gypsum here, right? After the grinding of a clinker, we need to add the gypsum and that percentage is two to 3%. So we never understood what is the reason of adding a gypsum. So let us consider two cases. That is case one and we have another case. This is case two. So if you don't add gypsum into the cement, what is going to happen? Let us say these are my cement particles, what I'm trying to draw it here. Yeah. So these are the cement particles. So whenever you try to add water into this, what is going to happen? Who is the first person that is going to react with this? C3A is the first person who is going to react when we add water into the cement. So once the C3A starts to act within five or 10 minutes, what is going to happen? My cement is going to get set. My cement is going to get set. So within less time, let us say five to 10 minutes, if my cement is going to get set, then I will not have enough time for the placement of my cement. Because once we prepare the concrete and all, we need to have enough time so that we can place the concrete. So within five to 10 minutes, if the concrete or the, if, if the cement gets set, we will not have the time or we will, we cannot, you know, place the concrete wherever it is required. So in order to delay that setting, in order to, I'll write it here, in order to delay the setting, we need to add something. So that's something what we add in order to delay the setting is called as gypsum. So I'll take a case two. In the case two, these are my cement particles here. Again, in this way, let me do it. These are my cement particles. And along with that, I have gypsum also in this. So let me draw and let us have added water here. So this is my water now. This is my water. So when, again, when I add water into this and let us say we have a gypsum in this. So what is going to happen? The moment is the moment the water is added into this, who is going to react first? C3A content is going to react first. I'll write it here, C3A, tricalcium aluminate. So, but since we have gypsum here, so gypsum is like a retarder. What the gypsum does? Gypsum says that I will not allow C3A content to react with the water. So gypsum will try to, you know, make a kind of a layer here. It's a kind of a protective layer. Let me try to draw it here around the particles of the cement. This gypsum is going to make a protective layer. So this is how that protective layer will be coated. Okay, I'll write it here. Let me make use of this. Yeah, it will make a protective layer around around cement. So what will happen the protective? Yeah, so what is going to happen the moment the water is added, the first water will be taken by completely water will be taken by the gypsum. So what will happen this gypsum will form a protective cover. So it will not allow the reaction or the it will not allow the reaction of the C3A. This C3A plus it will react with water, right? So this reaction is not going to happen suddenly. It's going to take time because this gypsum will try to delay that reaction. So that is why we always try to add gypsum so that what is going to happen will have enough time because if it reacts with C3A, then the setting of a cement, I'll write it here, then the 
setting setting of a cement is going to happen and it is difficult for us to place so once we add gypsum the gypsum is going to do its role it will try to create a protective layer around the cement particles so as a result of that we'll be getting more time we'll be getting more time to place the concrete or to place the cement so and also the fast setting is not going to happen so that is the reason we always try to add gypsum into the cement when uh, during the manufacturing so that the fast setting is not going to happen and we'll have enough time to place our concrete or cement so with this understanding we'll try to go forward and we'll try to see how this test will help us yeah so first we'll try to understand what is the significance of this setting time test so let us consider these are the three different time what i've chosen So these are three different time what I have chosen. One is 10 a.m. The next is 10.45 a.m. and 1 p.m. So at this time, that is at 10 a.m., what I'm going to do, I'll take a cement. This is a cement what I have. And I'll try to add water into that. I'll try to add water into that. that. So what is going to happen? The moment water is added, just if some will try to play its role, it will form a protective layer. And after that, once the effect of gypsum is died out, it will those water will react with cement particles right and it will start its reaction so let us say after 10 at 10 am at, at 10 am i added water to this after some time some time up to 10 45 what is going to happen the effect of gypsum is going to come down and tricalcium aluminate will start its reaction and after some time the cement the cement what i've added the water whatever it will start losing its plasticity that means initially it was fluid in nature initially it was fluid after 10.45, what is going to happen? It is going to lose its plasticity. So the time elapsed between the moment the water is added to the cement to the moment the cement starts to lose its plasticity is called as initial setting time, right? So this is a basic understanding of set initial setting time of a cement. So we'll try to see this again. So initially what will happen? Water will be added and the gypsum starts to play its role, right? And after that, what is going to happen? That once the effect of gypsum is died out the tricalcium aluminate starts its reaction heat is evolved and the cement starts to lose its plasticity initially it was fluid in nature and since the reaction started and heat was evolved what will happen the water also will try to go out and since the water tries to go out the fluidity of the cement paste is going to come down that means cement will start losing its plasticity so the time elapsed between 10 am to 10 45 am is called as initial setting time and after that, after 10.45, what is going to happen? The slowly, 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 the reaction will happen with other uh, components. And slowly, around 1 p.m., the cement will be completely lo losing its plasticity. That is, cement loses plasticity completely, and it, will be, and it will become a bit hard, and it will be able to take certain load on that. So that time elapsed between the moment the water is added to the cement to the time the cement loses its plasticity completely, and is able to take certain amount of load is called as final setting time, right? So this two definition we have understood. So we'll try to understand this in a more better way. So what will happen this time what we have that is from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. This is completely depending on the gypsum and tricalcium aluminate contain, right? Initial setting depends on gypsum and tricalcium aluminate contain. If gypsum is more, what is going to happen? If gypsum is more and tricalcium aluminate is less, what will happen? The reaction will start late because if gypsum is more, gypsum will try to form a protective layer around the cement particle. As a, re as a result of that, what will happen? It will take more time in uh, starting up the reaction because it will not allow the cement particles to react with water. So that is why the reaction will start late. And if the gypsum is less, if the gypsum content is very less, and if the tricalcium aluminate content is more, then what is going to happen? Then the reaction will start early because gypsum is very less, right? So more time is not required for the gypsum to stop its to stop playing its role. And since we have more tricalcium aluminate content in this, what will happen? The reaction is going to start first. So this time between 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. is completely depending upon the content of gypsum and tricalcium aluminate. So after this, the next what we have, yeah, 
So the final setting time depends on the alumina content. So this final setting time, what we have, no, it depends on the alumina content. If tricalcium aluminate, that is alumina, is more, then the cement becomes more stiff and it will take less time to set. And if less alumina content is there, then what is going to happen? The stiffness will be less and it's going to take more time to set. So the final setting time is depending on the tricalcium aluminate content and not on the gypsum content, but the initial setting time will depend purely on gypsum as well as the tricalcium aluminate content. So we'll try to understand what is actually initial setting time and final setting time in a more better way. So if you try to go through this, when the cement is mixed with water, it hydrates and makes a cement paste. This paste can be molded into any desired shape due to its plasticity. Within this time, cement continues with reacting with water and slowly the cement starts to lose its plasticity and set and it starts to harden. This complete cycle is called a setting time of cement. Or in other words, the time to which the cement can be molded in any desired shape without losing its strength is called as initial setting time of a cement. Or to put it in a very better way, the time at which the cement starts to harden and completely loses its plasticity is called as initial setting time of a cement or the time available for mixing the cement and placing it in position is an initial setting time of cement and if delayed further the cement loses its strength so you can take any definition out of this and this is a definition of the setting time of a cement especially the initial setting time it's a time elapsed between the moment the water is added to the cement to the moment the cement starts to lose its plasticity is called as initial setting time now we will see how to calculate the initial setting time and final setting time of a cement. So with the help of an experiment. So we'll try to see that. So uh, this is how it is. The initial and the final setting time of a cement is calculated using the VCAT apparatus confirming to so and so IS code. So what are the apparatus required? So this is a VCAT apparatus what we have. Along with that, we require weighing balance of 100 gram with accuracy of 1 gram and a measuring cylinder of around 200 ml. ML. Then we require wicket apparatus. We, requ we require a wicket mount. So this is that wicket mount. Then we require a gl glass plate and the plunger. This is a plunger what we have or a needle of 10 mm dia. A hand travel is required for mixing and a stopwatch is required for uh, counting the time that is required. Right. So this is how that apparatus is required. And now we'll see what is the procedure for this. So coming to the procedure, so it's a very simple procedure what we have. So what you need to do, take around 400 gram of cement and place it in a bowl or a tray. So this can be 400 gram or it can be 300 gram based on the requirement. So now add water, add water to this particular cement paste and how much water has to be added? 0 0.85 times into P is what you need to do. What is P here? P is a standard consistency of a cement. So in the previous lecture, we had seen how the normal consistency experiment was conducted. And we found that we require around 35% of water, right? And that 35%, whatever you are getting, no? So you have to multiply with this. That is 0 0.85 into that 35% is what you need to do. So whatever answer you are going to get, that much amount of water you need to put into this particular cement. So that is why it is written here. And once you see, let us say this is a cement what I have taken in the mold. Okay, this is a cement. Once you start to add that much water, you need to suddenly start the stopwatch. You have to start the stopwatch because from there, your initial setting time will be counted. So now fill the mix in the wicket mode, right? As soon as you add water, you have to, uh, with the help of a trouble, you have to mix it. And then you have to fill that into the wicket mold what we have. And if any excess cement paste is there, you have to try to take it off from the trouble. So then place the wicket mold on the non-porous glass plate and see that the plunger should touch the surface of the wicket mold. So this is a mold what we have. And let me draw it in this way. And in this, we have filled the cement paste. And this is a plunger what we have. We have to allow the plunger here. And then we have to release it. We have to touch to this surface and then you have to release it. So release the plunger and allow it to the sink into the test mold. So note down the penetration of the plunger from the bottom of the mold indicated on the scale. So in this way, you need to calculate this particular experiment. So what you need to do again, you need to check by the time this reaches up to five to seven mm from the bottom till that much time. That is my initial setting time, right? Let us say I started the stopwatch now. So what you're going to do, you're going to wait till your plunger is going to 
penetrate to a depth of 5 to 7 mm. So initially when you try to add water and you release the plunger, your, your uh, reading will be somewhere close to let us say some 40. Okay. Uh, let us say it will it'll be almost zero because since you have added more water directly it will penetrate to the full depth and you are not going to get five to seven mm then we'll try to wait for another five minutes and after five minutes let us say the reading is coming somewhere close to one right and now again you wait for five minutes another 10 minutes because what will happen by this time the cement will start to lose its plasticity if the cement starts to lose its plasticity what is going to happen the water is going to get operated and if the water is going to get operated slowly what will happen the plunger also will slowly will not go to the complete depth the penetration is not going to happen completely and when we find that the plunger is able to penetrate up to 5 to 7 mm at that time we are going to stop the stopwatch what we have and the time what we get that is called as my initial setting time so we'll try to see this in a more better way right so this is just uh, and this is that plunger and this is that pin what we use this pin will try to penetrate into that cement paste what we have done yeah so this is how it has to be understood aim of the experiment to find the initial and the final setting time of a given cement sample by wicket apparatus and these things we know what is the apparatus is required again coming to the procedure directly the, the cement sample is prepared by gauging around 300 grams of cement okay with 0.85 times the water that is required and p stand for the normal consistency right now the stopwatch is started as soon as the cement is mixed with the water the paste so prepared is filled in the mold completely and air is expelled by the cement mass by gently tapping the mold so once these things are done next is that the mold is placed in the platform of wicket apparatus which is attached with the initial setting time of the needle the needle is brought to the surface of the cement paste and it is released to penetrate into the cement paste. Initially, it is found that the needle penetrates completely into the cement mass. Why it penetrates completely? Because you'll be having more water. So the penetration becomes easily easy. And as the water starts to dry up, the penetration will not be that easy. And we need to search that particular point where the penetration will happen only up to 5 to 7 mm from the bottom of the scale. That means the penetration of the needle is noted at regular intervals, say at 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you're going to see the penetration again for 15 minutes, 12, uh, and it should be 20 minutes here, etc. Till the needle is penetrated at a point of 5 to 7 mm from the bottom, like we did for the normal consistency. The same thing we have to do it here. It was a it is other way around. In the normal consistency, we were trying to add more and more water, but here we already added more water, but we want to see till the water gets evaporated. So you can take 5 to 7 mm from the bottom, or also you can take 33 to 35 mm from the top. Usually 5 to 7 mm from the bottom only we try to see. So the time at which the required penetration take place, that particular time is called as initial setting time and we are going to stop the stopwatch there. Now for final setting time, how do you do? So final setting time, again, the same sample and the same procedure we are going to do. But this time, instead of using that particular needle, we are going to use a different needle. So a different needle called needle for final setting time with a circular cutting edge and an end projection of 0 0.55, 0 0.5 mm is taken. So I'll show you what is that needle all about, but the procedure remains the same. The cement is said to be finally set if the needle makes an impression on the cement paste, whereas the circular cutting edge fails to do so. So the time at which this condition is achieved is called as final setting time. So coming to the observation, how much gram of cement we had taken? 300 grams. So we'll write it as 300 grams. Coming to the normal consistency, in the previous lecture we had seen the normal consistency of my cement was 35%. So that is why I've written 35%. Now the amount of water added, what do you need to do? 300. Yeah. So, so it will be 300 into 0 0.35. 300 into 0 0.35 is what we need to do. I'll get around 105. And then 105 into it has to be 0 0.85 times. So you multiply this by 0 0.85. So you're going to get 90 ml. So the amount of water that is added comes out to be 90 ml. So this is how it goes. So initially the time in minutes is what we have written. So first in the 30 minutes, unpenetrated depth is 0 mm because completely the needle will try to penetrate. After 40 minutes also it is 0. After 60 minutes also it is 0. After 70 minutes also it is 0. So by the time it reaches 85 minutes, since the more amount of water has been operated and C3 has started as its re reaction with the cement, so I'm getting a penetration of 5 mm. So this time what is corresponding to 5 to 7 it can be. So since I got 5 here, so it is called as initial setting time. So the initial setting time of this particular cement is 85 minutes, right? 
So in the same way, we'll try to see how the final setting time is done. So this is that needle what you can see. So this is a needle used for finding the initial setting time of a cement. This is that needle and coming to the final setting time. This is that collar attachment what you have to put. So you have to remove this needle and you have to put this collar attachment. So the time period elapsed between the moment the water is added to the cement and the time the needle fails to penetrate the mold of 5 mm when measured from the bottom of the mold is called as initial setting time of the cement. Now coming to the final setting time. Now replace the needle that is a plunger by the one with the annular attachment. This one. The cement is assumed has finally set when upon applying the needle gently to the surface of the test mold, the needle makes an impression therein where the attachment fails to do so. The time period between the moment the water is added to the cement and the time which the needle makes an impression on the surface of the mold while the attachment fails to do so is called as final setting time of a cement. So we'll try to see this again. So it's the same thing. So the same explanation I've written it here to understand in a better way. The cement paste is prepared with 0.85 times the P and it is placed in the wicket mold and the annular collar of 5 mm die is allowed to penetrate. Initially, the collar will make an impression on the surface of the cement paste, but as the time passes, a situation will arise after which the collar will not be able to make any impression on the surface of the cement paste. The time duration from the instant when the water is added up to the condition after the collar is not able to make any impression on the surface of a cement paste is called as final setting time. So we'll try to see this in a more better way. So if you see this here, you know, see initially when you try to penetrate, what will happen? You can see this collar here. So this is that collar. Okay. This is that collar. So this collar will be making a impression and also this thing will be making an impression. Hasn't has and when this uh, mold what we have prepared, it will start to lose its plasticity completely and it will try to set. So the once it starts to set, you can see it here. See here, here what has happened only here it has been able to make a, a kind of a um, collar here, but this this part it is not able to make right. So here what has happened slowly, slowly the setting has happened. So a one point is going to come where only you can see it here. You can see it here. See only the needle was able to penetrate, but whereas you can't see any, you know, uh, the surrounding annular uh, collar uh, impression here. So now we are going to stop, stop the stopwatch and the time elapsed here and the time that is you get up to here is called as the final setting time of a cement. Initially, you're going to get this collar attachment, but has and when time will pass, has and when time is going to pass, you're going to get one point where only this point will be there, the point we are going to get, but that surrounding collar attachment, like you can see it here, here, that will not happen. So that particular time is called as final setting time of the cement. So again, that's it. So we'll try to see again one more thing here. So coming to the observation part, though, let us say it, it has taken 390 minutes for that particular, you know, collar attachment, uh, not uh, for that. Uh, it's a time elapsed. 390 minutes is a time taken where you can't see that collar attachment uh, impression being made on the cement paste, right? So coming to the result part. So we have found that initial setting time of a cement is 85 minutes and coming to the final setting time of cement is 390 minutes. So according to the IS code has per IS uh, 269 the initial setting time of a cement should not be less than 30 minutes and we have got 85 minutes it is not less than 35 minutes we are okay and the final setting time should not be more than 600 minutes and the final setting time we got it as we got it as 390 minutes and 390 is less than 600 minutes so whatever test we have conducted is satisfactory and this cement is fit to be used and you can use this cement in the construction so these are the practical importance of all this cement all this test what we have conducted. So in the next lecture, we'll try to see a few more tests that is required to be understood and we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.